let's get on to talk about combining three easy indicators into a trading strategy. Now, as I mentioned earlier when we were talking about or giving you the, you know, the risk warning, I said you should never trade anything you don't understand. Now, I always advise every trader to build their own trading strategy because there's probably as many trading strategies as there are traders, but not all trading strategies and trading plans are created equal. I suggest that you find some strategies and then build a trading plan around them. There's a plethora of trading strategies available to you, but I also encourage you to create your own trading strategies. When you build and test your own strategy, you are the master and you understand all the ins and outs. You are not just trying to duplicate someone else's thoughts. I always encourage traders to develop their own strategies, time permitting. Now, there are several reasons why I believe it's important for traders to develop their own strategies. First, creating strategy requires the traders or yourself to develop a greater knowledge of the market and its price movement. In other words, if some guru out there tells you, do this step, this step, this step, this step, this step, and when this happens, that happens, that happens, you make the trade. Well, first of all, you haven't even stepped into the financial market. You're just following somebody's guide. You're not building any knowledge about the market. You're not getting to understand how the asset moves. You're not making a educated decision. So secondly, when one develops their own trading strategy, they are tuned into how that strategy works. Because you see many strategies, like I've been trading a very long time. I have many, many, many different strategies that I use, depending on the market situation, depending on the asset, depending on what I see in my charts. Because I only trade six assets. I trade the euro and the major crosses. That's it. Because I don't think that anybody can follow more than six or seven assets at a time. You need to know these assets inside and out. You've got to know everything about them. You've got to know their personality. And you've got to be able to see what the charts are telling you so that you know what other pieces of information you need to add in to make a decision. So even if you trade someone else's trading strategy, test it thoroughly. And in the process, make it your own so you can learn all the ins and outs and maybe add your own twist. Now, this is a time consuming part, but if it's a part that you learn to enjoy, it makes trading all the more fun and interesting. Yo, know, the question is, does a professional football player who's getting paid millions of dollars or a professional basketball player just turn off of the game and go out there and bounce the ball around and throw uh, the ball around and win? No. They spent hours learning, mastering, understanding every play so that when they're on the courts or on the field, they see the opportunity. They see what is being presented to themselves and they can make a decision. So how do I generate ideas? How do I start? How do I start looking at different strategies? Well, you know the easiest way? is to look at the assets you trade and look for a trading opportunity you missed, a big move that you missed entirely. And you say to yourself, how did I miss that? What could I have done that might have alerted me that that was gonna happen? And before you know it, you start building a plan or a strategy or an idea. As I said, I look for moves where there is money to be made, but I didn't see it. So in short, you wanna analyze your charts looking for opportunities. Examine those opportunities and construct how to turn those opportunities into real money without exposing yourself to excessive risk. Once you've gone through several opportunities in this fashion, you will be on your way to creating efficient trading strategies. But also remember, we always wanna test and check. 
there's something that looks like it would have worked and you try it a couple times you know on, on your charts okay well it looked like it worked well you know what it might have just worked for today so give it many trades not with money on your charts in a demo account and see how long see if it lasted this week next week and a week after as a profitable strategy and if not test it modify it but you don't have to reinvent the wheel i mean i'm going to show you a basic three-step strategy tonight it's enough to get you started but you still have to put some time into it Now, the first thing is you have to decide what you want your strategy to do. Do you because you're, as one strategy is going to accomplish anything? Do you want to give it trading signals? Do you want to give it entry points? Do you want to just give it do you, you give you alerts? Now, you also want to identify the type of market and the type of trade you are. You know, me, I'm a very slow trader. If I make ten trades a month, it's a lot because I enjoy the analysis. I enjoy looking and watching. I'm a looky loo. Okay. But I need all my pieces to come together. I only want to execute high probability trade. Now, I miss a lot of opportunities only because I'm constantly looking to limit my risk and preserve my capital. Now, we can make these strategies very complex. I've seen some charts out there that students have sent me that I can't even interpret. There's so many lines, so many drawings, so many colors on them. I don't even know how they ever execute a trade. I, you know, the more things, more things you put on the chart, the less information you're gonna have. Okay, because it, it gets to be confusing. Now, I'm not against using indicators and oscillators, but I'm saying limit that. I'm a price action trader. I very rarely ever use an indicator and oscillator. Because do you know what indicators do? They indicate, they're the interpreters of the market. They help when you can't understand what price and price action is trying to tell you. So once in a while, I may take a look at what MACD is telling me or what Stochastics is telling me only because I can't, I need a little bit more information to try to make a decision. Because I, if you think of them as the translators of the market, something, so the market's getting mumbled and I'm looking for my indicator to translate it a little bit for me. But to be honest with you, when I can't see a basic trade with my little three indicator, my three little step trading strategy, I just don't trade. Because like I said, I want high probability traders. Now, a trader must refine his approach to trade over time by deciding the kind of indicators that work best for them. And you have to decide what kind of a trader you are. You have to look at your own risk management because indicators are more about warning you that something's happening in a market. So tonight, we're going to look at adding what I've used as my three steps. I use support and resistance. I use trend lines. I use chart patterns. And the last thing I do is my final decision maker is volume has to confirm what exactly what I'm looking at. Now, because we are all trading CFDs and CFDs are traded in short periods of time, you also have to design, decide on the time frames of your charts and what you're looking at. Now, I basically start out with an hour chart, then drop down to a 30 minute chart and then refine it down into a 15 minute chart. But you might want to start out with a 30 minute chart, a 15 minute chart and a five minute chart. But that again becomes what's important to you. So the first thing I do, the assets I trade, and it, I constantly, I'm updating them, I'm constantly looking at, is I put my levels of support and resistance on my chart. 
So regardless of what time frame you use, whether you're using a one minute or a weekly, you'll see where prices moved up and hit resistance and reversed and moved down and hit support. And these support and resistance lines stay on your charts. So you're not constantly drawing them on because the last time price was trading in this range is when you had these prices on the, the, these lines on the chart. So let's go over it and let's see if I can show you this on a, a live chart. Okay. Now here we were looking at the Euro US dollar and these, let's look at one that I'll give you something more defined first. Okay. See all these dot, dashed and dotted lines going across my chart? Well, this is historically the support and resistance levels for the Euro US dollar. And these weren't drawn on here today or yesterday. These were drawn on here a long time ago. If I pull my charts back, you can see they go back and back and because they come off the historical points and they are projected forward. So as long as you move your chart. Now, as price moves up or down, it's gonna move through other levels of support and resistance from the past. But as you change your time frames, you'll see these stay on your chart at those defined prices. They don't go away. Your charts change, but your levels of support and resistance remain consistent. So for me, that's the first step in any of my trading strategies. It's the first indicator I use. It's my support and resistance levels. And they're constantly drawn on the charts because you have to have a starting point. And then from this point, I start watching for chart patterns to develop. Now, I only believe in triangles. This is my personal belief. Now, double bottoms and double bops don't help us much in our type of trading because hitting a, a price level this two times, three times in, in a short period of time happens quite often. Things like head and shoulders, cup and handle, they take too long to develop for our type of trading. So I don't separate pennants from wedges and wedges from triangles. And I don't look at ascending and descending or symmetrical. I call them all triangles. You know, when I was in high school and we learned about tri you know, three-sided triangles or in grammar school, we learned about three-sided tri three triangles. We learned that triangles all change depending on the angles, the degree of each angle. But a triangle is just three-sided piece. So I use support and resistance as well as chart patterns. Okay. But only triangles. Again, whether they're wedges, whether they're flags, whether they're asymmetrical, de uh, ascending, it don't, doesn't matter to me. Whenever you have a support and resistance line above and below converging at each other, it's my definition of a triangle. And then lastly, I combine these together with support and resistance, or you add support and resistance, chart patterns and trend lines. Okay. But once I see a trading opportunity become available, I wanna make sure I add onto my chart volume. Now, keep in mind, Volume on any broker's chart isn't the entire global worldwide volume. You know, when you're trading with a broker, a broker uses a liquidity provider. The volume that shows on your chart is the volume of that asset with that with the liquidity provider. But that volume should mask should float out to the global volumes of 
because we're not counting was there 10 shares, 14 shares, 20. We want to see an increase in volume or a decrease in volume. And if the euro US dollar is seeing an increase in volume, it's not going to see just with ABC liquidity provider, it's going to be with DEF liquidity provider, and e, because all the brokers use liquidity providers. So when the only the only thing volume does is volume confirms your decision. Because when you see a breakout of a triangle at a support and resistance level, you should see volume expanding. If volume doesn't expand, then your strategy is, is telling you don't make a trade. So we can look at our levels. So we have all of our resistance levels. And I you know, we have whole classes in learning support and resistance. So tonight I'm not going to spend the class time explaining support and resistance, how you draw them on a chart, how you get them, because you need, it would take me over an hour just to explain all the way of getting and what I call eyeballing support and resistance is going back historically, looking at your charts and finding these levels of congestion or important turning points for an asset. So once we've combined these, I wait for a breakout from my chart pattern. I can then measure my target point based on the width of the triangle. The width of the base of the triangle will tell you what the projected target point would be at the breakout of the triangle. But we also, and one of the reasons we are aware of our support and resistance levels is when that target point is beyond an important price level, you have to drop this potential target point back below that possible rejection level. So it's one of the means that we, because in order to decide you want to make a trade, you also have to calculate your risk reward ratio and you have to know a target point and you have to also be able to determine where you would put your stop loss. So we would put the stop loss at the lowest low, at the bottom of the triangle before the breakout. And our target points of width not exceeding the next major support level or resistance level. So therefore we could calculate from this our risk reward ratio. Now I use in my strategy a three point breakout. Meaning that when the asset breaks out of the triangle, and I don't get into the definition of triangle, one of the reasons I say I lump them all together is I don't want to get a preconceived notion whether it's going to be, should break out to an up or break out to down. I'm waiting for the breakout. When I get my breakout, I wait for my breakout candle. Then my second candle is my confirmation candle. And my third candle is my trade candle. Because you get lots of false breakouts. You get lots of breakouts and they retrace back into triangles. Okay. Now, if you wait for your confirmation candle, and that confirmation candle remains outside of the breakout, you would then execute your trade on the next candle. And then in this case, we would have set our target point. 
we would have set it here. We would have set our stop loss point here, and we could have generated a nice trade. We would have never made this high because we would have put our, our take profit point here. But if we were alert and watching the market, we might have stayed in, but we would have been happy here because otherwise you could have missed this point and come back down to here. So it's very important, really basic. Trading doesn't have to be complex and complicated. Trading can be simple. All you're looking for when you build your strategy is something to tell you that here is a high probability trade. Here's an asset. Here's what direction it should be going. Here's the point in which I should execute the trade. Here's the point I should get out of the market. And here's where the path I should expect it to go. And here's the, where I would limit my risk to. How much more do you need? So it's important to make your trading decisions easy because when you make them very complicated, either they never get executed or they never get executed correctly. You spend all of your time trying to decide what to do. So it's pretty easy to see. Stop loss, use your support and resistance to put your stop loss, your sell orders, your buy orders, figure out everything you wanna do with a couple easy methods. Because price action is very easy. It allows you to see what the asset is trying to tell you. So many traders consider price action to have special relevance when identifying support and resistance for one very compelling reason. The market has actually traded this asset at these levels in the past. So which elements of support and resistance work best? Well, it depends on your strategy. None of the support and resistance levels have any predictive nature. Each is simply a probability that we won't be able to determine until the trade is over. So remember, when assets move, they make peaks and valleys moving up and down. So when we have our trend line on our chart, our support and resistance levels on our charts, and we have a, a, a some type of a pattern, a triangular pattern developing, okay, we can then make simple, easy decisions. Now, there's more complex things because you're not. And what I said to you before is you have to understand an asset. You have to understand its personality because, and you have to be able to read price action because the charts will tell you something. Okay? When you can see the price moving to support a resistance level and breaking out of a triangle, your candlesticks or your, yes, your candles should tell you something. That's right. Remember, I just showed you, we have our three-step candlestick decision. Breakout candle, confirmation candle, trade candle. Okay. These are not pattern recognition. These are not candlestick recognition. These are not complex interpretations. It's simple. It's looking at what price is trying to tell us. And it will give us everything you need to know. We always want to back check our, you don't ever want to waste money. You don't want to ever risk money when you're testing out a strategy. You also need to back check it as many times as possible. Go back and look at your charts historically. Go back, scroll back, look over the last six months and see how often you would have been right or wrong using the strategy that you would put on your charts. Okay. Test it, time it, define it. So after you determine a set of rules that you would have allowed you to enter the market and make a potential earning, look at the same example to see if your risk would have been. 
determine what your stops will need to be in the future trades in order to capture potential earnings without being stopped out. Now, many strategies don't last forever. They fall in and out of profitability, and they work at different times. Like right now, we have a very weird market. You know, we have all this Russian-Ukraine conflict going on, which is making us take it, you know, shift to us from a very risk-on market to a very risk-off market. And the markets now are very sensitive to global headlines. And this is affecting the euro, the dollar. It's affecting you know, a lot of currencies. It's also affecting a lot of the commodities. It's affecting the stock market. You know, European stocks are getting battered, but there are some stocks that are doing extremely well, especially if you're in military production. You know, last year we had Corona, which affected the markets. So different strategies work well at different times. And you should be able to see in your charts which strategy or what the market is telling you or what situation the market is in so you know what to, to test. So keep in mind, strategies fall in and out of favor over different time frames. Occasionally, changes will need to be made to accommodate the current market and our personal situation. Create your own strategy or use someone else's and test it on the time frame that suits your preference. By using what the past has shown us, we can give ourselves some great starting points to achieve our goals as we become more experienced traders. And track all your strategies and mark them down, understand what they are and have records of them. Okay. Now, as I said, this class has been recorded. If you want to see a recorded version of this class, you can do so by using the same link in about 24 hours to see a recorded version of the class. And if you do have any questions, type them in before I sign off from the class into the screen and one of our financial analysts will send you back an answer. So remember, take your time, define your trades. Don't force yourself to a strategy that you're gonna find that's gonna give you trades. The market offers tons of opportunities. There's always going to be another trade. Okay. Limit yourself to only high probability trades that fit your entire criteria. Okay. And make sure you're constantly looking at your risk reward ratio and never making a trade you don't understand and never risking more money than you can afford. So thank you very much for joining us. And have a great trading week. And thank you for being part of the Alvexo family. Bye now.